Hey, everybody. Hi. Tell us uh, who you are. I'm Dean Marcos. I'm a civic collections manager here at the American Museum of Natural History. That's Dean Marcos. <laughs> and I'm Jack Cesario. Jack, what do you do here at the museum? I build exhibits. Well, that sounds like a cool job. Yeah, I know. I've been doing it for about 19 years now. Maybe 19 years, yeah. And the latest one that we've been working on is this really big coral reef. Let Dean tell you a little bit about what the show is going to be about. Well, tell me where we are first. Okay, we're in the uh, production studio, exhibition production studio at the American Museum of Natural History. This is uh, a, a place where we build models and dioramas for the exhibitions that go in the museum. Jack is very good when he picks out. Um, we're currently working on an exhibition about Cuba, which will open in November, and uh, it's pretty exciting. Um, one of the elements in there is a coral reef, a, a, a recreation of a coral reef. So this is a coral reef that is accurate to Cuba in particular, right? That's right, yeah. So, And t that's, I think, a particularly interesting thing that maybe people don't always know. This isn't just any coral reef that we're building here, right? This is... Yeah, swing by. <laughs> really well researched, and uh, talk to me a little bit about that. What's the research process like? Yeah, well, like? so we, we work with uh, curators and, and other scientific consultants to um, understand why we're representing this coral reef and what, what about it is, is unique. We do our, our own research, we get reference images. Um, Jack, do you want to chime in on that a little bit? Yeah, how do you start building a, a coral reef? Well, first, we go through the designers who are on the fourth floor, and okay, they come up with a basic plan of what's going to be the footprint of the reef, and they give us dimensions and heights, and kind of, uh, that's the basic, okay, it's a foundation to build each stage up, and um, then we kind of get involved with uh, curators, and they tell us, you know, basically what kind of corals are going to be on the reef and things like that and uh, God, can you help me here? This, this is so sure. much to do. I mean, they point us towards um, references and, and you know, images and, and other types of research that we can use. Um, and then, you know, we look at what we have in our collections in terms of you know, models that we might already have existing so we can try to reuse some things if we can. Um, and, figure out which things we're going to have to build from scratch. Like, like this hawksbill turtle, for example, which we, is a, a model that, you know, um, a really beautiful model that's just made for this, for this coral reef. The, um, so wait, just nuts and bolts. Mm -hmm. How do you build a turtle like this? Like this is, what is it made out of? It's, it's made out of, it's cast from resin in, in different parts. So we made, we had a sculpture, we made molds. Um, we cast it. It's it's actually very lightweight um, and has a little bit of armature inside, so we can put it on a post and sort of have it floating here above the, the coral. And how is it painted? Uh, mostly airbrush. Um, that's that's a, a really uh, you know fun but challenging process. And obviously, you know, a lot of time is spent looking at models of actual. Turtles. I mean, uh, photos of actual turtles, and, and we have some in our collections here that we can we can look at. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's that's the the whole trick is is getting getting the details right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, do, do you want to talk about a little bit where these came from? Or how there was from another show, and how we kind of reused materials. Well, we or? did. We recycled a lot of these coral pieces from a, a, another exhibition that had been we had were traveling around the world, but it had it reached the end of it. It's. Uh, life and and we brought those elements back here and sort of took them all apart disassembled an old coral reef and then uh, and we also added some other elements but um, Jack made a lot of the the Elkhorn coral out of parts from that coral that we got back there. Elkhorn are, are part of the story because the um, in Cuba there's the coral reefs off the coast of Cuba <coughs> are much healthier and more vibrant than a lot of other coral reefs in the Caribbean because there's very little pollution running off from the islands because they're, they're less, there's less development on, on the island. So that's, a, that's an important part of the story. Um, Bobby Joe Howard asks, how many hours are invested in a piece like this? 
Uh, we probably worked on this for about six, six or seven months, I believe. Four. Yeah. Oh, four. Yeah. Oh, okay. Might because it longer seemed to you. longer to me yeah. because at one point I had a, uh, I had this little back issue and that kind of kind of disabled me. But I still worked on uh, different parts of it. Um, <laughs> Can I ask you guys to quickly reintroduce yourselves for folks that are just joining us? Sure, I'm Jack Cesario. And Jack, what do you do here at the museum? I'm a senior principal comparator uh, at the exhibition department at Chalmester. Great. And Dean? Dean Marcosi, and I'm a director in the exhibition department, and I manage the production in our uh, production studio up here on the fifth floor. Great. And so we are... Um, Shady, Shadi Hagab asks, is this on display already? So no, it's not, right? Where, tell us a little bit about the room that we're in. Yeah, so this, this is a, a part of our production studio. We, we build models and dioramas up here. Um, this is not on display yet. We're uh, installing it. Just in a couple of weeks, we start installing in, in Gallery 3. The exhibition will open in November, mid-November. We have... Um, Question from Eleonora Degano, which says, why a fake turtle and not a taxidermied turtle? Well, several reasons. Um, one is we, a taxidermied turtle would require that somebody go and collect a real turtle to use, which we, you know, we don't want to do that, with, it, especially with any species that might be endangered. Um, and um, also, yeah. because we can't. It's, oh, I think one, maybe yeah. one thing is that, as you said, it was lighter, so the materials were lighter. I mean, is that a consideration when you're building? That's helpful, yeah. That definitely helps to, to be able to, because this will, this will travel all around the world when, after it's on display here. It'll be here for, in the museum for about nine months, but then it'll, it'll be traveling around. And um, certainly, logistically, it's a lot easier to travel a model. And what kinds of things are you thinking about when you're designing an exhibit? Like I see, for instance, that this is actually kind of, the coral reef is not quite connected yet. And you were saying that it is going to be connected at some point, right? Well, we'll talk about the, traveling. The, well, because there isn't enough real room to span the whole thing together, and we need to have people be able to come in and out of their cubicles. Uh, and also, it all gets broken down into multiple sections because it, uh, to travel, it can't just go as one big unit, it has to go in multiple pieces. So that becomes a whole other issue with everything has to be crated into a certain size boxes, how many tractor trailer loads, how many boxes can they fit in a tractor trailer. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole series of problems that come in with traveling shows. So that's why that's basically broken here, because there wasn't enough room and it's meant to be broken down. Right. So we have to think about things like the size of the units, that, that will travel, how heavy they are, and they have to be very durable. They have to come together, put, you know, be put together and come apart multiple times, so they have to have a, you know, a lot of durability, and that's some of the things that Jack is wrestling with when he's building something like this. Kurt, Kurt Whelan asks, what's the advantage of a model reef over film of a real living reef? Well, um, I think, you know, we try to make environments with people and in, in, in exhibitions where people can really get sort of an immersive feeling like they're, they're, they're actually in that place, they're experiencing it. Um, there are, you know, movies and TV screens and stuff like that. People see those all the time, every day. I think um, being able to like walk through a real 3D recreation is something that's, that's kind of unique and that's what we're trying to create a, um, a visitor experience that, that people can't have without coming to the museum. Right. And you can't do this. <laughs> so um, one person, and I apologize, uh, someone who I saw earlier, um, was t Joshua Cook was talking about the fact that the colors are very natural seeming. Uh, and I wonder how much you guys are thinking about uh, the colors of something underwater versus, like, what is that a consideration when you're thinking about painting an exhibit? Um, yeah, I suppose that's really important. But in terms of like effect and having something that's lifelike as opposed to everything being kind of in a blue haze. Um, a lot of times when the shows are put into the exhibit, there's also lighting involved and lighting becomes another issue. Some of this may be obscured with shadow and soft blue light, which I think they're gonna be using on some of this. So, and then there'll be highlights like, you know, sun rays kind of you know, bursting through. 
Yeah, we're, we're gonna have those shimmer lights that, that kind of like right. give it the feeling of being of the surface, you know, refracting light and, and causing movement and stuff. And I mean, with a coral reef, it's it's actually they're pretty shallow in the water, so we don't have to do a lot of like deep water effects, which is, is good for this. Um, but we we definitely look at at images of coral reefs that are you know taken in the water, and we try to you know recreate this, those kinds of colors and, and those kinds of effects. Very cool. Any other highlights for you? What are any favorite animals or species that you particularly enjoyed working on? The pillar coral was a lot oh, of fun. Yeah, that was Can nice. we take a look at those? Tell me about the pillar coral. Um, well, we had a, a kind of struggling, it has a very delicate kind of uh, surface, yeah. Tech, surface texture. And we ended up using terry cloth to cover the whole thing to give it that more lifelike appearance. Uh, it gets, it's hard to see probably on Facebook or camera, but it was all covered in, uh, yeah, uh, towels, basically. <laughs> you can see the seams are in the back, <laughs> but that's another story. <laughs> um, yeah, and, you know, try to give it some color, put it all together, uh, whatever it takes. And then sometimes you throw the... You know, the kitchen sink at an exhibit to get it done, and, and I think this one we, we kind of like excel at. So. What are some of the more, so towels, are, have there been any other interesting materials you have repurposed in the past to create something? Oh, in the past? In the past. I mean, we, we do basically two major exhibitions a year, so we're always building stuff up here. And yeah, I mean, I can't think of an example of a but we're always coming up with some. Technique that you know, <laughs> personal project. Yeah. What? Um, he, he, once, he once built a, a giant. A giant no, I was thinking about that that giant water vessel that you built out of foam that you found in the dumpster. You know, yeah, yeah. We kind of recycled ceiling yeah. insulation or something. Yeah, that, we had all. God, that was a while ago. Um, hmm, yeah. Well, in the meantime, Bobby Joe Howard, think on that. Bobby Joe Howard asks, "What was the most difficult part of this to build?" Probably living through it. <laughs> <laughs> Surviving. <laughs> Surviving. Uh, the difficult part? Yeah, no, it was that we had a really hot summer. Okay, so we were building things up here sometimes in like 80 degree temperature. Uh, uh, so just, you know, the nitty gritty of building stuff sometimes and, and, and making it so that people are going to enjoy it. Cool. Well, I think I'm going to give people a little tour around uh, the reef. Thank you guys so much. I'm yeah, going to. Yes, and please keep posting your questions, and I'm just going to do a little tour of this.